My name is James Williams Jr. We're going to come with Havoc number two. All right, so as you know, I post a lot of videos, some having to deal with Kung Fu, some having to deal with politics, war, events, and life. And I know that none of my videos are totally being watched, like talking about it. I do have a certain amount of followers. I'm trying to grow the channel, and I am failing at it epically. But I have not quit or given up. I'm trying to broaden my horizon. I'm trying to get more people who know martial arts to come in and do fight demos with me and things like that. And, you know, I'll choreograph it so that nobody gets hurt and show you what you can and can't use and what works in the movies and what works in the, the streets. All right. Now, just so that you know, uh, a lot of things that work in the movies do work in the streets. It's just implication provocation and contact are the three things that make it difficult all right for instance in the street the fight will generally only last between three to five minutes depending on who makes that first contact and how tough the opponent is if your opponent is as tough as a box of rocks you being in the fight with that person is the difference maker Especially if you're not a tough fighter. A couple of videos back, I gave you guys the tree technique or the pole technique. Still the technique that I, again, tell everyone is mostly utilized in the film Jim Cotta. If you haven't seen that, you should probably check that out. Sadly, I'm not in that movie because I was like maybe 12 when it came out. Olympic um, gold medalist Kurt Thomas is in that movie and it's still hands down one of the favorite movies that I love more than anything in the world and um, you know I'm not going to teach you something that you can't use you can use leaping knees you can use elbows you can use what has been dubbed the Superman punch by MFC or MMA or UFC or whatever technically it's not the Superman punch legally it's always been a Captain America punch because Captain America did it first regardless of what anybody else says Captain America did it first the punch and the kick at the same time. Captain America did it first. Uh, Raphael used it in the very first Ninja Turtles movie. But Captain America, above all else, did it first. He did both the punch and kick at the same time. And yes, it can be done in the streets because I have done it. Now, it also works in the movies. It looks better in the movies because it's just one of the coolest kicks that you can do. So with my channel, since my acting career hasn't taken off, and my YouTube channel really hasn't taken off. And some of the things that I post, I will post on Facebook to show you the effectiveness of what will and what does not work. A lot of things that you see in a movie can be utilized in the street. The problem is, if you're not a real martial artist, if you're an actor, do not attempt. We would not like to read in the Hollywood Gazette that actor such and such tried to do such and such and found himself in a situation that he could not win. There's a reason why it's called acting. There's a reason why there's fight choreography. There's a reason why it's exciting and people pay the big bucks to go see these things. Now, in real life, I'm going to tell you like this. A lot of martial arts are effective and ineffective at the same time. And nine times out of ten, it depends on your discipline. It also depends on your fighting experience. If you are not a person who's been in a fuck ton of fights... Your fighting experience will always be a factor. I speak from experience because I've been fighting since I was six years old. I can tell you what works for me. It should work for you. I'm not Superman. I'm not special. But I can teach you how to use what works versus how to use what doesn't. As I've said in many of videos, if you see tornado kicks, if you go to my Kung Fu Havoc 1 channel, you will see a lot of flash and stuff that I used to be able to do, which I no longer can do because the doctors ordered me not to, and because of this hip replacement, has put a big cutoff on my arsenal. Because right? I had a good arsenal. I had a good arsenal of kicks, which have been limited to basics now. But I had a good arsenal of kicks. And because my career hasn't taken off before that, and I'm severely damaged on my left leg, it doesn't mean that I cannot use those. It just means that I should not use those because the doctor said so. And doctors aren't always right. But at my age, I'm not taking that chance. I don't know if I can still do a jumping spin kick. I will attempt to do that eventually. 
it wasn't one of my best kicks in my arsenal. One of my best kicks was my left-legged tornado kick, where it was totally fucking awesome, and now that I can't use it, my right-legged tornado kick isn't as exciting. And I'm predominantly right-legged. But my, you know, I, I'm going a, I'm to a be honest with you, as martial artists, some moves from some sides are just devastating, and I'm one of those guys, where some of my left kicks are awesome, and some of my right kicks are not, where some of my right kicks are awesome, and some of my left kicks are or not. Therefore, you know, the reverse tornado is now out and the regular tornado is out. So I might be able to still do a jumping spinning back kick. I might not. I haven't done this in four years. This year is the fourth year that I have been out and I have been lightly training because of my hip replacement and because the military is only going to pay for this one now. If I do something to this one, I'm shit out of luck. So to be fair, if you want to see some of those old moves of mine, go to Comfortably Havoc number one. I'm still advocating on how to get back in control of that channel. So, but it's still there, you know. Um, the, the best I can tell you is that um, I would like to reboot that channel, actually. So I'm going to work on that this week. I'm going to try to, if I don't remember, if I don't forget, we had this conversation, rather. I'm going to try to get back onto that channel because all of my followers there probably have no idea that I'm the same guy and that we're on Comfort Havoc number two. But if I can get both channels up and running, that would be great because then I can post it on both both channels, you know, until I decide which channel is going to go. Or I can make a Comfort Havoc three and get rid of all the shit and that'll solve that problem. But, you know, the thing with uh, fighting, everybody's body... Is only the same on the outside. It's not the same on the inside. As most martial artists, I'm not talking about like systemically, like we all have hearts and livers and shit like that. Yeah, that's all the same. But when it comes to pressure points and things like that, where you find it on you, you might not find it on someone else. For the most part, certain ones are in the basic same spots. As a martial artist, I can tell you from Kempo, wherever there's a joint, there's a pressure point. That's a, uh, uh, this is a suggestion that you should always keep in your head, just in case. So if you're listening and if you're a martial artist, I want you to remember that saying, wherever there's a joint, there's a pressure point. And you have 365 pressure points. I can assure you that 250 of them are fatal. And I know the 250 that are. I will never teach that to certain people because I learned it by force, not by course. So the thing is... I've also learned that there are certain parts of your body that you can harden to reduce pressure point damage. So, you know, the iron body technique is one of the techniques that I have been taught, I had learned, and a lot of people pass it off as bullshit. So, I'll put it to you this way. Um, iron body takes a lot of focus. And for me, I know my iron body limit is anywhere between five to seven minutes. So I have to be able to beat you within five to seven minutes or I'm going to start feeling pain. And the thing with Iron Body, the most people that have that technique are TIE Fighters. So if you're fighting a TIE Fighter, they don't have a whole lot of pain that they can feel. Their pain threshold is fucking amazing. All right? But that's also because a lot of the old TIE videos, they're probably banned now because it's like probably considered child abuse where they have you sitting here like this and they beat you with iron rods and wooden rods and bamboo rods and the only places they don't hit them throat crotch elbows and knees and these for top fighters are their most dangerous weapons the elbows and the knees now boom now if you're gonna fight a martial artist and you are a martial artist it would behoove you to recognize the fighting stance and the fighting styles. Most Thai fighters, not American kickboxing, most Thai fighters will come at you this way. All right. Now, as honest, assuming as that is, it's like, oh, what is this? What is this? All right. First off, that doesn't look dangerous to you at all, right? Because you're thinking, oh, he doesn't even really have his guards up. So if you're throwing a kick, boom. 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 So this is very dangerous. Don't think because they're coming at you that they're not dangerous, all right? All of this is like iron. 
So if he blocks and smashes your shit, you know, you're going to know it. Simple as that. So don't be assuming that this tie fighting move right here ain't dangerous. And they generally bounce on their, the balls of their feet more than the heels. So if they're bouncing, you know, they're getting ready. And it's the same thing I would tell anybody. If you're going to get into a fight and you know martial arts, don't do this. No. Don't break down into crane and kung fu stands and stuff like that because you're giving away your entire range of motion. And they're going to look at you and be like, okay, so this guy, he does crane, his arms are so long, so if I can avoid his first punch, I can probably take him out. The whole reason I learned martial arts was so that I could be a better fighter. Not so that I could defend myself, but so that I could be a better fighter. My politics has changed as I grew in martial arts and realized that there was a lot more to martial arts than just punching kicks. However, my favorite part of martial arts is punching and kicking. More kicking than punching. And then when I lost the ability of my hip, things got a little bit different. So when you're going to do martial arts, you need to understand quite a few things. Basic martial arts is best in real combat. All right? Everybody who does martial arts just got pissed off. They're all giving me the finger right now. I'm explaining this to you because as long as I've been fighting, as long as I've been breathing, I have never done a tornado kick on anybody outside of a sparring match. Sparring matches, fancy stuff is cool because it lets you know that you can actually accomplish pulling it off. Real fight, stick with basics. Guys coming at you, boom, front kick. Guys coming at you, boom, axe kick. Guys coming at you, boom, push kick. You know, keep it basic. Because if you slip up and try to do a reverse tornado and you miss, or you go for a flying dragon and they duck and they come up, you know, all of this is defenseless. You keep it basic. Boom, boom, that's your strike for kung fu. Boom, boom, that's your strike for karate. Boom, boom, that's kung fu. Boom, boom, that's your karate. Those are your differences. Karate and Kung Fu have like maybe that much difference. It's karate, block counter, Kung Fu, block counter. Your block counter is a strike for Kung Fu. Kung Fu, outside. Karate, inside. You understand the gist. Tie fighting matters not if they're outside or inside. Their kicks, awkward as they look, are very, very painful to receive. Because they don't just kick you with their foot, they kick you with their entire fucking shin sometimes. Because they're kicking down trees and shit there. So, yeah, you know, tire fighting is very, very dangerous. Um, American kickboxing, they're not as tough as tire fighters, but the kickboxing is based in the same tie style. So they may come here with this shit and throw a knee or do some shit that you might not expect coming because you're thinking they're doing tie fighting and they bust into American kickboxing. If you can match a style and you can adapt to their style, and you are a better fighter, you can beat them. That was the second sole purpose of me taking martial arts, is so that I can form a gate to as many styles as possible and beat them. I'm not Bruce Lee. I do not know Jeet Kune Do. But I do know that adaptation is everything. And every style has a style within a style within a style. Your style will have a style within a style within a style. And if you can break it down, you know, you have, you have your Wing Chun, boom, you know. You have your, your Shaolin, you have your Dragon, you have your Taiga, you have your Mantis, you have your Snake, you have your Crane, you have your Horse Fist, you know, you have your Drunken Master, you have your Capoeira. You have an ensemble of thousands of martial arts but the real trust is that this here your boxing will probably be a little bit safer in a fight to just stick with basics a lot of people get into the fanciness of all the flash and the flurries of wushu and other martial arts that have a lot of aerial combat which is great if you can connect now here's the thing if you're going against someone who only has a defense and their defense is fucking phenomenal, you're not going to win. Because a great offense is a great defense. And if their defense is great and you're throwing everything you got, 
and you get hurt while you're doing it, it's because you have not learned how the golden rule of fighting is. Alright? Now, the golden rule of fighting, especially if you come out of my, my camp, it's not how hard you hit, it's where you hit. A lot of people have been taught as a youth that when I hit you, I'm going to hit you as hard as I can. That's a double negative. Stay tuned for the next video.